Hello, it's Patrick here from the GarageBandGuide.com. Getting your vocals sounding just right is perhaps the most important part of your mixing job. The overall quality of your produced vocals can be the difference between a good project and a great one. But in this video, I'll share a couple of pointers that have helped keep me on the right track in my projects and might help you improve yours too. I realise this might sound a little bit strange, but trust me here, holding off from mixing your vocals until you've tweaked the rest of the tracks in your project can save you time and limit frustrations in the long run. Instead, keep your vocals in mind as you mix the other tracks in your project. Taking this proactive approach specifically when it comes to how you EQ the other tracks in your project will make your life much simpler when you come to mix your vocal tracks. More on that when we discuss EQ later in the video. <music> Applying compression to a vocal track can be a tricky business. It's particularly important to know what the purpose of adding compression to your vocal actually is. So before diving in and cranking it up, take the time to listen through your dry, untouched track a few times. Round the circles, I'm getting dizzier. The more you spin me around, watch me hit the ground. You said you'd always catch me if I ever fell again. Where are you now? What do you think it needs and how is it lacking? Mixing without purpose and just slapping effects onto tracks willy-nilly just because you think you should is a surefire way to end up with a muddy and underwhelming finished product. First off, I'd recommend ditching the dinky wee compressor dial found in your track's smart controls completely. This single dial doesn't give you anywhere near the level of control required for this. Instead, it's a better idea to make use of GarageBand's more advanced built-in compressor for your vocal tracks. The extra control and flexibility available to you can really help your vocals sound more professional. Quick reminder, you can find GarageBand's advanced compressor in the Smart Controls plugins menu. Here are a couple of vocal compression setups that I find work for me. But remember, these settings are meant as starting points for you to work from, not precise instructions for you to follow to the letter. Taking the time to experiment with what sounds right for your project is key here. Variation 1, laid back compression. The aim here is not to squash or really even bring the vocals to the front of the mix. They're designed to simply catch the occasional loud changes in frequency or transients as they're known. The threshold you want to set to minus 8 to minus 10 decibels. Ratio you want between 1 to 5 or 2 to 1. Attack 1 millisecond or less. You might need to boost the gain by 2 to 4 decibels here, making sure not to have them overpowering the rest of your project. You should be using EQ to make your vocal track cut through the mix, not extra volume. Round the circles, I'm getting dizzier. The more you spin me around, watch me hit the ground. Round the circles, I'm getting dizzier. The more you spin me around, where are you now? Round the circles, I'm getting dizzier. The more you spin me around. Unlike the last recipe, the purpose of these settings is to really let you hear the compressor at work. 
It's designed to bring the vocal track to the forefront of your mix, but take care not to over squash your audio. Threshold, minus two to minus five decibels. Ratio between four to one and seven to one. Attack, one millisecond or less. You'll need to add some gain here to make up for the amount of compression going on. Between four and seven decibels should do the trick, but see what works for you. Getting dizzier. The more you spin me round, watch me hit the ground. You said you'd always catch me if I ever fell again. Before diving in and trying out some EQ settings, it's important to remember how much effect the way the vocals were recorded has on their sound. For example, recording vocals with a condenser microphone will result in more top-end frequencies being present in the recorded audio than if recorded with a dynamic microphone. The quality of your recording method plays a big part too. Vocals recorded using the built-in microphone on your Mac, for example, will sound very different from vocals recorded through a studio quality XLR microphone. That being said, there's one frequency area you're going to want to look at regardless of how your vocals were recorded. The low end. Specifically, anything under 125 hertz can, in my opinion, be chucked completely. Down here is where your kick drum and bass frequencies reside, all that you'll find in the 20 to 125 hertz range of your vocal track is some gnarly sounding hum and irrelevant audio debris. Just get rid of it. The more you spin me Most other instruments and tracks will have usable frequencies between the 20 hertz and 5 kilohertz range so there will be a lot of different sounds competing to stand out from the rest. Make sure your vocals sit comfortably among everything else that's going on by creating a wee frequency section just for them. I like the 2kHz to 4kHz range personally. If you keep this in mind when you EQ all your other tracks, even cutting their EQ curves in the vocals only frequency range you've created, you'll find it much easier to keep them at the forefront of your mix. Remember, there is no 100% perfect vocal setting here. All I can do is give you the starting point to work from, and the rest is up to you. First off, roll off all frequencies under 100 hertz. This is all rumbly nonsense at this range anyway, and besides, you really want to keep the 20 hertz to the 80 to 100 hertz area clear for your kick drum and bass. Use the red high pass cutoff EQ point in GarageBand's built in EQ window, and you can get there by opening smart controls and clicking on the EQ tab. Have a listen back to your vocal track once you've done this, and you'll hear that you've lost a lot of boomy low end sound, making it clearer in the mix already. Again, where are you now? Round the circles. Right next door to our high pass cut is a small frequency range that can really hold back your vocals from standing out in your mix. Cutting by 2 to 6 decibels in the 125 hertz to 250 hertz range will reduce that muddy, muffled sound that will sometimes make your recording sound less than stellar. This won't always be the case though, and be careful you don't make your vocals sound too thin here. Did you always catch me if I ever fell again? Next up, we need to get a bit creative. You need to scan through the frequencies using one of the available EQ points. The purpose of which is to identify any ugly or nasty sounding frequencies in your recording. Literally drag the EQ point up as far as it will go, 
play back your vocal track, you can use the cycle region on a section. This will eliminate the need to keep starting and stopping if you want. And drag the point from the 100 hertz mark up to the 8 kilohertz point and back again. Around the circles, I'm getting dizzier. The more you spin me around, watch me hit the. Take your time to pinpoint any harsh or ugly sounds that you hear. Chances are you'll find them right where I did slap bang between the 500 hertz and 1 kilohertz region. Round the circles, I'm getting dizzier. The more you spin me around. Cutting by around 2 decibels to 6 decibels here helps remove that cheap, boomy sound as well as some unneeded mids. Always catch me if I ever fell again. Where are you now? If you want to add a bit of extra sparkle and sheen to your vocals, use the rightmost shelf filter to increase the volume of, or boost, the frequencies above 8 kHz by 2 to 6 decibels. This can help cement your vocal track as the centre of attention and make the performance sound clearer and cleaner. Now be careful not to overdo it though. Boosting here will also increase the volume of the sibilance in the performance. Sibilance is the unpleasant vocal harshness that you sometimes hear when some syllables are pronounced. So your S, SH, CH and Z sounds. Use in moderation and you'll be all set. Generally speaking, your main vocal should sit dead centre or just off of centre if you find they clash with other centrally panned instruments like the bass or drums in a crowded mix. You said it always... Your backing vocals and layered vocals can be panned much wider. Layered vocals in particular can really create a feeling of thickness when panned wide of a centrally aligned main vocal. Catch me if I ever fell again I'm getting dizzier The more you spin me around Watch me hit the ground You can go a few ways when adding reverb to your vocals. You can add just a little, just enough to colour the performance and give it a more polished sound. Round the circles, I'm getting dizzier The more you spin me round Watch me hit the ground Or you can go all out and add tons of reverb. Used correctly, piling on lots of reverb can result in a really unique sound, though you need to be careful to keep your vocals at the forefront of your mix. You said you'd always catch me if I ever fell again. Where are you now? Personally, I like to keep things simple and low key on my main vocal track, maybe adding no more than 10 to 15% of the effect. For backing vocals or layered vocals, you can add much more. Round, watch me hit the ground. Me round, watch me round. Hit me round, watch me hit the ground. I'm getting dizzier The more you spin me around Watch me hit the ground The same principles apply to echo. I'd recommend holding off going all out on your main vocal track again, adding again 10 to 15% of the effect, as any more than this can sound unfocused. 
Instead, add a little, just enough to colour the sound and save the dramatic echo sounds for your backing vocals. Round the circles, I'm getting dizzier. The more you spin me round, watch me hit the ground. So there you have it. Those are my top tips to help you mix great sounding vocals in GarageBand. If you're just getting started with GarageBand on Mac or just want a refresh on the basics, you can grab my quick start guide absolutely free. I'll put a link to that down below. I've been Patrick from thegaragebandguide.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.